Hello world, Keon here, and welcome to yet another Phasmophobia solo tutorial. This tutorial is focused on the intermediate setting, so if you have yet to get there or want to try this out on an easier difficulty, I got you. I teach you the basics in my first video, so click the link in the description to head there. Now I am a strong believer in not soloing larger locations like the high school, prison, or asylum, so today we're going to focus on the Edgefield Street House. While the recommendation for this house is two players, you're a strong independent black ghost hunter who don't need no man. So we're gonna solo this bitch. Now since intermediate isn't unlocked from the start, you have to play a few games to get there. So at this point, I'm assuming you have some money. So our goal is to join the rat race and make even more money. Every day until we die. Which hopefully won't happen if you follow this guy thoroughly. But ghosts on intermediate are a bit more dangerous and there's a fair chance you will be brutally murdered by a game of guess who. So don't bring your entire life savings on the hunt with you. Unlike amateur difficulty, if you die on intermediate, you only get 25% of your equipment's value back as insurance money. However, the money you normally would make is doubled and you get an extra 50% in experience. No risk, no reward. Now when it comes to my choices for equipment, thermometers and strong flashlights are a must. Other items will help us complete objectives to get that money. It's not guaranteed though, so I just like to bring everything. However, if your budget is a bit tighter, I recommend bringing the cheaper equipment like salt, glow sticks, smudge sticks, lighters, and a crucifix. These items tend to have objectives quite often, so you can get a little bit of extra money for the cheap, and if you end up dying, you don't lose too much. If you have a little spare change, I strongly recommend bringing an extra camera and some sanity pills. The camera's gonna help you maximize your evidence-taking opportunities and to minimize the small feeling of failure when you accidentally waste a photo. Premature photography is a common problem. Don't feel ashamed. The sanity pills are there to help you look for the ghost a little bit longer. So if your sanity is a little low, but you don't feel like you have enough clues to actually nail down what the ghost is, the sanity pills will help you extend that time a little bit. Double check your equipment before starting. Remember, if you're not okay with losing 80% of your equipment's value, you should probably leave it behind. But if you're Leroy Jenkins, proceed to wait for your computer to crack the glass ceiling that has it stuck at 90%. Once that's done, grab the key, review your objectives, then let the hunt begin. Now for equipment, I'm starting off with the Discovery Twins, an EMF and a thermometer. Since I've recorded this footage, I've started going in with a thermometer and a photo camera instead though. If I find a bone or somehow get the ghost to show up early, I can take a photo for some sweet money and leave the camera in there. Just something to keep in mind to minimize trips to the van since you're going solo. Since I'm zipping around with the thermometer, I'm going to leave as many lights on as possible. I found the Ouija board fairly quickly, so I dropped the thermometer with the quickness and go back and grab a camera. Now how this is supposed to work is you go to the board, ask the ghost questions like where are you or where are all the drunk bitches at, and you take a picture of the board as they tell you they're on the toilet. The picture taken of the board while the ghost is using it is supposed to give you money and experience, but lately it's been coming a blank in the journal. Dick move game, dick move. After heating what the board had said, we go to the toilet with our thermometer in hand. This toilet seat is definitely chilly. I haven't found a bone yet and I still want that sweet sweet money and experience, so I go keep looking around for it. Once I find the bone in the garage, the ghost decides to mess with me. Now while I got EMF level 5 in here, it's important to remember that that doesn't necessarily mean that we found the ghost room. EMF detects ghost activity, which is definitely happening, but not specifically the ghost's presence. I mean, also, they already told us they were in the toilet, so, you know. Once I get a photo of the bone and pick it up so I can make chicken stock later, I go back to the bathroom with the intent to hold the ghost's hair behind its head while it's puking. Unfortunately, it already puked in the sink. Well, not unfortunately for me, this is extra money, but unfortunate for the homeowners because I am not cleaning this up. I'm a ghost hunter, not a plumber. I'm not brave enough for that job. Take a photo of the doo-doo sink and leave some materials behind, especially the EMF. Now that I'm pretty sure that I have the right room, we're gonna grab some equipment so that we can wait on the ghost to do its thing. Let's kill two birds with one stone and bring back the video camera and the ghost journal. If you're ballsy, you can leave your flashlight behind and carry three items back from the van, but as you can tell, I'm not ballsy. Now if you're cooler than me, you can potentially prop up the journal so that the video camera picks it up any writing so you don't actually have to go back into the house to see the writing. But I'm missing some clues and an objective, so I'm going back in. Oh, Let's grab the smudge stick and a lighter. Not only is it one of my objectives to smudge the ghost room, but this will also make the ghost not hunt me for a little bit. Hopefully. This actually worked out pretty well also because the bitch flipped the breaker on me. Once we fix that, let's go see if they wrote something in the journal and take a picture. Once I update my diary, my ghost options are now limited to... You, you know what? It's probably better if you just hear the actual stream. So these are Revenant Shader only, so let's see. A ghost orb. 
or fingerprints or spirit box doubting those dwarves are a thing and of these things I'm thinking it's a shade honestly oh no fingerprints all right so let's go look for some so thinking I can find some fingerprints I walk back in with a crucifix and my camera Let's drop that cross and go back and pick up the UV light. While the light will show fingerprints that the ghost has left behind, these prints aren't guaranteed to be in the room, so I look around for a bit. Once I've given up on that, I decide to go back and grab the spirit box and pop some pillies in order to prevent me from going crazy. I'm lucky yet again because this ghost seems to be a talker. Are you close? Mm -mm. At this point, I'm pretty much done. But am I? Maybe it's the doo-doo sink, but right now the thirst is real, so I'm going to try to get a pick of this bad boy. I bring some extra protection and try to coax the Oni out. She gargles in my ear for a split second. Hey, can you show yourself? Can you show yourself? You know what, I forgot this bitch's name. She showed herself and I missed a shot. Oh, that's it? I'm not pushing her anymore? Oni, can you show yourself? Oni, where are you? Fuck, that's the fucking Ouija board. Let me get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I ain't giving a picture of this bitch. So I take this as a hint and get the hell out. Although I didn't get the picture I wanted, I still did pretty damn well. Overall, this was a very lucky playthrough. All the items I needed to find were on the first floor. Even without a ghost photo, I got paid pretty well. So I do hope these tips come in handy. The ghost was fairly active this time around, so the whole hunt took about 20 minutes. If you're confused on anything, don't worry, so am I. But please, feel free to ask away any confusion in the comment section. Don't forget to do the YouTube-isms if you like this kind of content and want to see me make more of it. Thanks for watching, and please take care of yourself. Bye-bye.